Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thank God for this fine, wonderful day. Hallelujah. Let us close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for this giving me an opportunity to come on live. And also I pray for the Prophecy Practice Room Group. Let all those who are watching, I pray, let your presence come upon your Lord and you touch Lord. Let the spirit of prophecy, spirit of revelation be flowed and be imparted to them, Lord. And I submit myself to you, Lord, and you speak through me, Lord. And let it be a blessing and the name of Jesus be exalted. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. So, today also, I thank God because I have come on this group on online, on live. I thank God for giving me a privilege. Hallelujah. So, how many of you are watching this uh, video live program continuously? For the last uh, seven episodes, I was telling you how to prophesy and there are many, uh, there were many tips of how to prophesy. And also, I was taking classes on uh, consequently about how to be a good disciple. Hallelujah. So, today also, um, Holy Spirit is uh, telling me to share with you some how to prophesy and how to be a good disciple. We have seen that uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, the Holy Spirit comes with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But if we are not having the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the, we are not able to demonstrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Unless you have the fruits of the Holy Spirit to be, is not, if it is not revealed in you, you cannot have the nine gifts of Holy Spirit to reveal from you Lord. So I am uh, telling you Lord, in the name of Jesus, your mind should be like Jesus, your character should be like Jesus. What Paul said, Paul said, Paul is saying boldly, follow me as I follow Christ. We should say like that. We are human beings, we have many uh, disabilities, we are not perfect, but we must try hard to become holy. We must try hard to become like Jesus. You know, when we read the book of uh, Jeremiah, we can see that Jeremiah was called as a prophet even before he was born. Even when he was uh, in his mother's womb, before he was uh, about to be begotten, God called him as a prophet. And we can see that Jeremiah was afraid of the surroundings and we see that Lord speaking to Jeremiah. In the book of chapter 1, uh, 12th verse, we can see that. I will read that. Though, therefore, gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, but lest I confound thee before them. Hallelujah. So, Jeremiah was afraid of the people. He was afraid of surroundings, everything. So, whatever God said to him, he was not telling that uh, in fully. So, God told him, if you are afraid of them, I will make you even more worse before them. Hallelujah. So, God is telling Jeremiah that you must be bold and you must be courageous. So, whatever, so we are all uh, prophets. God has called us for uh, as end time prophets. God is raising up an army for end time revival and we are all called as prophets of the end time revival. Hallelujah. So we should have the boldness. Whatever Holy Spirit says, it should be said directly without a, any afraidness. You should say that boldly. Hallelujah. Unless God will make a shame before them. That's what happened to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. So, I was telling you how to prophesy and there were many tips, uh, uh, one through speaking in tongues and other through praising. When you have no word, you just praise and the presence of God will come and you will be able to give word. And I have told many instances from the Bible also. So, today also I am telling you uh, how Moses prophesied. Moses was called to the king's palace in Pharaoh's palace and the palace was full of frogs and the dining table, the kitchen, the bedroom and everywhere, the sitting room, everywhere were full of frogs. The Egyptians, uh, the Egypt, uh, the magicians of Egypt, 
they tried their best to remove all the frogs but they could not so at last the king called Mo Moses and said you please pray for us and we can see that when we read in the book of Exodus chapter 8 9 the verse it says and Moses said to Pharaoh accept the honor of saying when I shall intercede for you for your servants and for your people to destroy the frogs from you and your houses that they may remain in the river only. So God called, uh, Pharaoh called Moses to pray to Jehovah the God to remove the frogs. And we can see from this verse that Moses was asking Pharaoh when I should pray. When I should pray. And in the 10th verse we can see that Pharaoh is replying. So he said tomorrow and he said let it be according and Moses is replying let it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. So for Moses is asking when, when I should pray to God and Pharaoh is replying tomorrow you should pray. Tomorrow you should pray and Moses said that let it be according as you wish and you will know that there is no other God than Jehovah the God. So, actually, when this conversation is going, Moses is saying by faith. He is saying by faith. Hallelujah. Moses didn't get any revelation from God. God didn't tell him that I will remove the frogs. But Moses is saying that by this time tomorrow there won't be any frogs. Can you say like that? Can you say like Elijah? Elijah said, until I say there won't be any rain. Hallelujah. There are some people I know. When they see, they have to go for a long distances. They have to travel. When they see, uh, hallelujah, clouds, rainy clouds, they will pray. I pray in the name of Jesus. Until I reach there, there won't be any rain. They say, they pray like that. Hallelujah. But at the same time, they carry an umbrella also with them. Why they are carrying the umbrella? After they have prayed, because they fear that suppose if they if it rains, they want to take precaution for that. So you should not be like that. Your faith should be absolutely hundred percent faith. You should not doubt. Hallelujah. You should not doubt. Whatever you say, you must believe that it will happen. So when Pharaoh called Moses. And Moses uh, was asking, when should I pray? And God, and Moses is saying, and Pharaoh is saying that by tomorrow, the frogs should go. And Moses said, tomorrow, the frogs, there, there won't be any frogs. And we can see that in the 12th chapter, Exodus 8, 8th chapter, 12th verse. Moses, uh, you know what Moses did. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried out to the Lord con concerning the frogs which he had brought, brought against Pharaoh. So after saying to Pharaoh that there won't be any frogs by this time tomorrow, he, went, he and Aaron went to his home. He, they went to their place. They prayed. They, they cried to God, Lord, we said like that. So remove the frogs. Hallelujah. And in the 13th verse we can see that. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses. Out of the courtyards and out of the fields. So what I am telling you is that. When you are called for a meeting. Or for a house. Or when you are before somebody. Or when you are in a prophetic threat. You are not getting any revelation. Whatever that comes in your mouth you say like that you write like that and then afterwards you pray hallelujah many instances while i was riding my vehicle while, while I, I, I am in the traffic jam people will call me we want to know what for what course my daughter wants to join we want to know which alliance is good for my daughter they they will call me like that you give a word, you give a word, they will force me like that. Actually, I, I, I am in the traffic block. I cannot say, I am not getting in revelation. But I am forced to say something. I say this and that. But later when I go home, I pray. 
and I have seen that God did miracles like that. God heard my prayers. So this is one of the way how to prophesy. Hallelujah. So when we can, when we read uh, the book of <laughs> Luke chapter 21, 14, the verse. Therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries, adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. So you should not be prepared. What is your preparation? Your preparation is just praying and praising him. You should not prepare uh, for a person, uh, Lord, you, when, you, when you are in a meeting, when you are in the pulpit, you, people are sitting before you. When you look into them uh, at their faces, you should not uh, beforehand ask God, Lord, give me a word. But when you stand up, when you stand to preach, God will give you the word at the right time. That's what the verse is saying. I will give you the word. I will, I will be your mouth. So if, if God wants you to use your mouth as his mouth, your mouth should be pure. That's what in the book of Jeremiah chapter 15, 19, the verse, Lord is saying to, uh, Lord is saying that you take the precious out of the wild and I will be like your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My mouth will be like your mouth. So whatever you say that will happen. That's what uh, we can see. Elijah's mouth was like the mouth of God. So whatever Elijah said it happened. So a prophet, our tongue, our mouth, everything should be holy and pure. And we should not prepare anything before. What to say? What to say? You just pray. You just uh, kneel down. You just cry out. You spend time, hours for time. Only if you are a prophet, you must, you must be a man of prayer. You must be a man of praise. When Solomon praised, we can see at the, uh, in the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles, uh, all in the book of Kings, we can see that whenever the servant of God prays, the presence of God came. And, and on the first day of the dedication of the temple of God, when Solomon and other uh, people praised, you know what happened? The presence of God came. So if you have no word, you just praise. Hallelujah. Let your uh, life be a full of praise and worship. Hallelujah. So I believe that in these days, God will speak to you. God is speaking to Moses face to face because he was faithful. God was speaking to Elijah. God was speaking to other prophets through visions. So maybe he, you are not seeing any visions. Many people, uh, some people who are in the prophetic thread, uh, I have heard them saying that we are not seeing any visions. <laughs> if you are not seeing any visions, you have to wait before God. You pray and after, after that you, you wait to show, you ask God, show me a vision. Maybe at the early time you won't see any visions, but after some time you will see visions. In my experience, I am telling that in my early times, I never saw any visions. But I cried to God, Lord, show me a vision. So after my prayer, I will wait. If I pray for one hour, I will wait for one hour. One hour. If you pray for 15 minutes, you wait for 15 minutes. To hear God's voice, to, to see the visions. So you must spend so much time for receiving the word, of, word from God and also to see visions. Sometimes in the early stages, the visions won't be clear. There won't be clarity. But by practice, God will make it. You will see the visions with much clarity. Hallelujah. So I am telling you that. How many of you are listening to this? While I am telling you, I see that many people uh, are going to have their tongues filled with fire. Because God is releasing his fire on you. Hallelujah. So when uh, you, you know there are prophets. There are many prophets. There are different kinds of prophets. Uh, Isa was a prophet. He was a famous prophet in the Old Testament. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Habakkuk, they are all prophets. 
And what is the difference between these prophets and Samuel? Samuel was a prophet. Not only he was a prophet, he had an apostolic calling in him. He had the fire in him. Hallelujah. So whatever you say, it should happen. Whatever you say, it should uh, uh, come into force. You, you say not only revelations, but whatever you say, it should happen. When you say your word should have the power. So you pray for that. Lord, fill my tongue with power. You know, Jesus was anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. So whatever he said, everything happened. If Jesus went into one centurion's house and, the, and there was a girl. She, was, she died. And everybody was uh, singing songs uh, because she was going to be buried. Everybody was weeping and crying. But you know what Jesus said? Jesus came into that ha house and said, Why you are singing and crying like this? As if she is dead, but she is sleeping only. Can you say like that? In the negative circumstances, can you say? Can you say? Whatever there is negative, no, it is positive. Can you say like that? You know, when God created the heaven and earth, when it was empty, the space was empty, there, everything was, there was nothing. But you know what God, God said? God said, let there be light, let there be earth, let there be sun, let there be moon, let there be stars. And everything was created. So, if you are a prophet, you must pray for that. Whatever I said, it should happen. Not just prophesying, not just giving revelation. Your word should have the power. Your word should have the power to create things. Hallelujah. So, you must be like that. Hallelujah. So, uh, if you submit to God, God will use you like. I told you that um, uh, there are many prophets in the Old Testament. But what is the difference between uh, other prophets and Samuel? Because he had a double calling. What was his calling? He was an apostolic prophet. What is an apostolic prophet? His main calling is a prophet. But he has an apostolic and anointing. Samuel had an apostolic anointing. So, he had the double calling. So, we are all called for prophets. We are called for prophets for end time revival. So, we should have the nine minister, uh, we should have the nine gifts of Holy Spirit in us. We should cry for that. We should pray for that. When we see the book of Corinthians, we can see all the nine uh, gifts are connected to each other. So, when Holy Spirit comes, it comes with all the nine gifts. But some people are having only two or three gifts. They say that God is giving uh, gifts only two or three. But no. When G Jesus had the nine gifts of Holy Spirit. When we look into the life of Jesus, we can see that he had the nine fruits of Holy Spirit. If you have only the nine fruits of, if you have only three fruits of Holy Spirit, you will have only the three gifts of Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many of you can understand? There is a man, uh, now he is uh, with the Lord. His name is uh, Brother D.G.S. Dinagaran. He, is, he was from India. He had the nine fruits of Holy Spirit. And also in his ministry, I had seen him um, operating the nine gifts of Holy Spirit. So, we are called not only as prophets. We are called to operate all the nine gifts of Holy Spirit. So, what I am telling you is that. You must be submissive to God. You must hear what God is speaking. You must open your ears to what God is speaking to you. Because the anointing which you have received is able to give you, is able to advise you, tell you everything. What the things that will come and what the things that is present. You need not to ask anybody else, what is that and give me an advice because the, you have the anointing in yourself. If you spend time, if you spend time with God, if you have a communication with Holy Spirit, if you have a fellowship with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will tell you everything. Hallelujah. How many of you are listening? 
Hallelujah. So God will do miracles. I was telling you uh, uh, about how to prophesy. Also I am telling you consecutively I am taking the class how to be a good disciple. How many of you want to become a good disciple? If you want to become a good prophet, if you want to become a good warrior of God, if you want to become a break, uh, curse breaker of God, if you want to become a uh, power demonstrator of God, you must be a good disciple. God wants to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of Holy Spirit should be released through you. That's God's plan. Hallelujah. So, if you want to be used powerfully by God, you must be a good disciple also. How can you become a good disciple? Look at the life of Paul. He imitated no pastors. He imitated Jesus. He imitated no human beings. You know, in the ministry of Paul, wherever he did, there was signs and wonders. What was the reason for that? What was the reason uh, why, why when others minister, there are no miracles seen. But when Paul is ministering, so many miracles are seen. What is the reason? What is the reason? I am telling you. Because Paul never wished that he, he should be known to the world. But he was always praying and he, also, he, he always wished that he should be known in heaven. So when Paul stands in a pulpit, when Paul ministers, heaven will know. The angels will come to the, they will say that, oh, that man Paul is ministering. So we have to go there. So the, when Paul ministers, the angels in heaven are waiting to get a word from God. If God says, they will move. So if you want them, angels to do in your ministry if you want the help of angels if you want, if you have if you want the angelistic ministry in your, in your ministry you should concentrate on god not on people whatever you prophesy whatever you say you are you should not be afraid you should not be bothered about human beings but you should be, be in, you, you must know that whatever you are saying, heaven is seeing, heaven is watching, God is watching, all the angels are watching. Hallelujah. So whatever Paul, uh, Paul did, there was uh, miracles. In all his ministries, there were signs and wonders because he never wished to be known in the world, but he wished to be known in heaven. So the hell was also afraid of Paul. Satan was afraid of uh, Paul because he knows that Paul, when Paul ministers, it will bring damage to hell. So what I am telling you is that let your wish, let your ambition is let your ministry be known in heaven, not in world. Then whatever you do, your signs and wonders will follow you. Paul was a good disciple. Paul said boldly, follow me as I follow Christ. When we look into the life of Paul, we can see when we read the book of uh, all the epistles of Paul, we can see that he was a role model. He was following Christ. So we must uh, we must be like that. We must follow Christ. <coughs> we must have the mind of Christ. When Christ was on the day of crucifixion, he was not afraid. He never cried. But the two prisoners who are on either side one accepted Jesus why because that that prisoner he thought that there is something in the life of Jesus even after the death there is something that's why that person was attracted to Jesus so when if you are a disciple of Jesus people will come to you your character must be like Jesus Jesus has said that in the book of Matthew chapter 16 24th verse Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone decides to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus is saying that, if, if anyone decides to come after me, hallelujah, there should not be any interruption. So Jesus is saying that, if anyone wants to follow me, 
anyone's anyone wants to become a disciple you deny yourself how you will deny yourself you have many wishes you are in this world you have many uh, uh, wishes in your heart then how you can deny yourself when you look into the life of abraham how abraham lived abraham and lot they were traveling they were in search of the promised land but you know lot was not a man of prayer and he followed abraham, uh, abraham not after hearing lot's voice but when sodom gomorrah was in front of them lot selected that but you know what abraham abraham did in select that he gave the choice to lot and when there was the time to depart abraham said if you go right i will go left if you go left i will east i will go west that was abraham's attitude he was denying himself his wishes he denied himself so in the in the ministry in your family life in your secular life you practice that you deny yourself you deny your wishes you have many, many uh, you have many wishes you have many temptations you deny everything for the sake of jesus so that's what jesus is saying that if you want to become a disciple of me if you want to become a follower of me you deny yourself hallelujah i know there was a man he, he had a little land and his father mother didn't give him land they said you are a, you are serving the god god will give you the land to you so you give the land to that uh, your brother you know what he said he said he didn't say anything but he looked up because he, he had daughters to get married and he wants the land but his parents are saying that you give the land to your brother but what he said he looked up he remembered what god told to abraham god told to abraham you look where as much as your eyes go that land i will give it to you you walk from day to evening from morning to evening you walk the whole place you walk i will give it to you so the parents said that you give the land you give everything to your brother and you god will give you then what he reply he said he didn't say anything he looked up and moreover jesus has said that if anybody takes away takes your clothes away give your coat also if anybody takes your clothes by force give your coat also in the book of matthew 5:40 we can see that <coughs> so denying uh, if you deny everything to god for the sake of god god will honor you god will give you god will reward you so if you want to become a follower if you want to become a good disciple you must be you must deny everything if you want to become a prophet you must deny everything you are the mouth of god whatever you say it should happen you should not tell lies i see many people telling lies hallelujah in the prophecy practice room also in the prophetic threads many people telling lies we have given words what i am telling you is that don't tell lies because your mouth god wants to use your use your mouth god wants to use your mouth to create many things god wants your tongue to prophesy to many people so be holy in your mouth in your heart in your body everything god has purchased you so be a good disciple i am going to pray for you let us close our eyes father in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i thank you father for giving me an opportunity to come on live those who are watching bless them lord they should not have any inferior or superior complex let their mind be like you lord let the heart be like you lord let them be good disciples let them follow you as paul followed you lord in the name of jesus i release the anointing of prophecy in the name of jesus those who are watching and going to be watched 
In the name of Jesus, I release the prophetic anointing right now. Let the, there be an increase in anointing. Let them see visions. Let them speak in tongues. Let them have the interpretation of tongues. Let them prophesy. Let them see visions. Let them hear the voice of God. Right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be clarity in visions. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord for releasing the fire. Thank you Lord for releasing the prophetic anointing. Thank you Lord for blessing them. I pray for the prophecy practice group. I pray for all the admins. I pray for our leader. James brother. I pray for all other admins. I pray for all the members of the prophecy. Prophecy practice room. I pray for all those who are in the training room. Lord, you release your anointing. You release your anointing in all the prophetic threats, in all the posts. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for I feeling the presence of God. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. So, God is with you. God is with you. So you practice, you attend all the threats, you attend all the posts. So next time, ne next, next week, same time, I will be on live if God allows. May God bless you. God bless you. Amen.